Canada hospitals and physicians are paid independently from one another so hospitals generally receive a budget from either like in Canada from the government or from uh, insurance providers and hospitals are responsible for paying for all the costs that are not physician services so drugs devices tests and so on um, physicians on the other hand receive their income directly from the government or the insurance provider uh, through other fee for service or salary or something like that now, although hospitals have to pay for all of the costs that are borne within the hospital, except the physician services, the physicians are actually the one that are often dictating the amount of resources that are used within the hospital. Okay. So currently there's a misalignment of incentives where the hospitals would like the physicians to consider the costs of the types of you know, tests and drugs and devices that they use, but um, physicians have no incentive to do so. Okay. Now, this is especially true in areas like cardiology and, cardi and um, orthopedics, and that's because there's uh, the presence of what are known as physician preference items. So if you think about cardiologists, things like stents, now, uh, or in orthope uh, orthopedics, prosthetics. So this is important because if you look at the increase in costs in areas like orthopedics or in cardiology cath labs, most of that uh, increase is accounted for by increases in the cost of drugs and devices, not physician services. So it's not only um, the part that is growing, it's actually a part that is large both in absolute and relative terms. Okay. Um, so another feature of these, er these areas, like in cardiology, is that the hospitals buy these drugs and devices directly from the vendors. So they negotiate directly with vendors on the prices that are going to be paid for, let's say, stents. Now, these contracts that are written between the hospital and the vendors have, um, have a nonlinearity in them, in the sense that the more that the hospital buys of a particular drug or device from a particular vendor, the cheaper that they will get these drugs and devices. So there are rebates that are given based on quantity. Okay, and so um, the hospital would like the physician not only to consider the cost of these drugs and devices when making decisions, but uh, would actually like the docs to get together and standardize, coordinate, so that they could benefit from these discounts. Okay, so gain sharing programs, which have been tried in the US, allow hospitals to provide bonuses to physicians which are based on savings at a team level. Now, just a little note on the side, these are essentially illegal in the sense that they violate anti-kickback rules. So the US government allowed these things on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to test them out, sort of like a pilot project. Okay. Now, under these gain-sharing programs, which are team-based incentives, hospital saves, and therefore the physicians will get bonus checks, if the physicians substitute towards cheaper drugs and devices. This may be a good thing or a bad thing. If they substitute to lower quality, that might not be a good thing. It, has an, it may incentivize physicians to reduce the quantity, get savings simply by stinting on stents. That's my pun for the day. Um, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, strictly prohibited, and so they monitor the docs to make sure that this is not happening. But more importantly, physicians win, and the hospitals uh, win also, when the physicians coordinate and standardize on particular drugs and devices. Okay? And because these incentives are based on the team behavior as opposed to individual uh, expenses, there's an incentive to monitor your uh, team members. Okay. Now, experience in the government, uh, they've put into this into place in uh, several hospitals under very strict rules. So the contracts that were put in place were extremely strict and the, hospital had to, the hospitals needed to A, get permission, B, comply with these rules. Now, in these gain-sharing programs, physicians would receive 50% of the cost savings per category based uh, relative to a historical baseline. So if last year our team spent a million dollars on bare metal stents and this year we spend 900,000, there's $100,000 of savings, half goes back to the hospital, half goes back to the team equally split among team members. Okay. Now, um, so with some uh, colleagues of mine, uh, we have access to the entire universe of these programs. So we're talking about 
uh, 50,000 patients, hundreds of docs, dozens of hospitals over 10 years. And when we track these, uh, what we show is that there's substantial, these gain sharing programs led to substantial reductions in costs. Now, that may, um, that may be a good thing, but uh, cost is just the price times the quantity, so maybe we're saving simply because we stinted on stents. Um, now, so what we do is we look then at the effect of gain sharing on, on quantity and prices. So if you look at the effect of these on quantity, they had no effect on total quantity. They had a little bit of an effect in changing the choice between a bare metal stent or a drug eluding stent, but essentially choices were not uh, quantity choices re um, remained the same. What's more interesting, so the savings has to come from the price. So there are two potential ways that you can save by having a lower price. So did you get a lower price because you actually bought the cheaper drugs or devices, or did you actually standardize, bargain for better prices, and reach these rebates? And so when we look at the prices, we can show that about 99% like of the price reduction did not come from substitution to the cheaper drugs, but in fact came with, uh, from within price reduction. So the Johnson & Johnson drug eluding stent fell by a considerable amount. Okay, so uh, under strict rules, this may be something that we might want to consider, obvious to make direct payments uh, to try to align the incentives at the physician and the hospital levels. Obviously, we're going to have to have some safeguards uh, to make sure that some of these perverse incentives like reducing the amount of quantity don't occur. So this is a potential way of bending the cost curve. It's also not at all a controversial way, uh, way in the sense that what you're saving is not by affecting quality or quantity of care, you're saving simply by paying less for the drugs and devices that the hospital buys. Okay, so there we go.